Reading with your kids. Hola, Nihal, Kunichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Mahaba, Moni Moni Wanji, Namaste, Jambo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted and so honored that you are joining us in our mission to help families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcasts. Our guest today is the author of a Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read. His name is Scott Feld, and he is here to celebrate Dax to the Max, book one, Imagination. Before we invite Scott in to celebrate his Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read, we want to let you know that this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Mission Control, a big feelings adventure, a Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read by Nan Arkwright and illustrated by Joe Bauman. Here is another five-star review that was written by Michelle G. It's on Amazon. This book is a must-read. The book captured my imagination from the very first page. As a mother and a teacher, I've seen the importance of helping children learn how to regulate their emotions. This book does that in a fun, child-friendly way. Imagine what our world would be like if all children learned this and grew up to be able to handle their big emotions as adults, too. I highly recommend this book. It will become a favorite in your home. This is a great book to add to your family library. You can get your copy today at Amazon. It's Mission Control, a Big Feelings Adventure by Nan Arkwright. A Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read. Joining us right now from San Diego in California, our guest is here today to talk about a great picture book. It's called Dax to the Max. Please welcome to the show, Scott Feld. Hey, Scott, how are you? I am great. Hi, Jed. Thanks for having me. Ah, you're very, very welcome. I'm <laughs> really excited to learn all about Dax. Tell us all about this character. All right. Well, Dax is my six-year-old son. And it was written about him. And he looks just like the kid on the cover with the long California blonde hair, which is where we live. And, um, you know, Dax is a pretty normal kindergartner. And though he has a dad who is a mindset life skills coach, so he has no chance. And (laughs) so ever since he was born, he's in the car listening to whatever I'm listening to, the latest and greatest. Um whether it be Neville Goddard or Bob Proctor or some other just mindset training. And so um, because I do that, I have a company called Minds in Motion. Minds in Motion is all about teaching teens and tweens all about their super inner powers. We call it their ISP, their inner superpowers. So when they have ISP, they know that when they come up against conditions and circumstances of life, that they have something within them that they can use and they don't have to wait for the outside world to change. So doing that with that age group, I needed to do something for my son's age group, knowing that at a young age, if they could really start learning about this ISP, then they would have such a better chance as they got older. And so Dax to the Max was kind of born out of making sure I took care of that kind of three to seven year old age group uh, using my own, my own son. How did you get involved, especially get involved so deeply in this um, kind of mindset um, movement, I think is the best way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe just a little strange when I was younger, the books that I would read would be like Krishnamurti. Um, I would read um, stuff like Think on These Things. And it was that was the most interesting thing to me. I didn't really do anything with it. I just think my my mind was tuned to that. And it wasn't so tuned to the traditional education, you know, after a certain grade. It, you know, grades kind of fell off, but I'm always studying how the mind works. I just want to know, like, what, what can we do? Like, what's possible for us? Um, the mind is magic. And then it was about 18 years ago that uh, a friend kind of led me to the Landmark Forum, which is an international organization that does like weekend trainings. 
and I liked it. And I ended up, you know, doing things with them for about 10 years where I coached and taught and studied and learned. And at the same time, I did, uh, there's a thing called Mind Valley, Mind Valley Quests. So it's all the best authors and mindset teachers are on there doing their programs. I got very deeply involved in that. And that was really it. It's just been a nonstop study. And, and even, you know, driving here to my home office today, um, you know, I'm listening to something, uh, you know, Neil Donald Walsh today about, you know, how the mind works, how we can use it. And it's important. So important. I think I'm I'm a lot older than you, but I mean, I, when I first was introduced to a lot of these concepts, most of the public are like, "Oh, these are these are really woo woo. They're out there and crystals and you know, meditate on your navel and all that kind of stuff." But for me, I didn't de- do the deep dive that you that you have done but i've always been fascinated i do believe that we have uh that 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 we're not not even scratching the surface in terms of what we can do with our minds what would you say to the person out there who maybe maybe not be almost 100 years old like me but just might be having that first uh Oh, this is a woo. Yeah, he's from California. Of course, he's from California. <laughs> you know, totally. Stuff. Uh, what would you say to that parent? Well, you know, I have to say it to my own parents because <laughs> they think their own son is a little woo woo. But I, I think ultimately, you have to simplify it and you have to make it make sense to them. It, it has to. You can't stand on your pedestal and be like, you know, look, I know so much. I'm so aware. I'm so enlightened, right? You know, come to me. You have to, you have to bring the message to them, right? So in my book, fear is, is Fredly the bear. You know, I see the bears behind you. Kids love bears, teddy bears, whatever. But a grizzly bear in a cave, well, that, that could be scary, right? Because the cave, there's a, there's a great saying that is the cave you fear to enter holds the jewels that you seek. So I use the cave because it's getting out of the comfort zone. Now you talk to a parent and, the, and, and you say to a parent, I know sometimes your kids are afraid. They don't want to leave where they're comfortable. This could be like going into a swimming pool to take a swim lesson. This could be going to a new school. This could be going to a camp. This could be doing anything that seems not normal to them, like in their comfort zone. This is the cave, right? So you go in the cave and that's where the jewels are. What's the jewels? Well, nobody really wants to do the thing. They want what you get out of the thing. They want the result, right? We go work out and lift weights, not because we're so in love with lifting weights. We want the health or going for a run or whatever. We want to make things afterwards. So that's what we tell them that, look, we know your kids don't want to face the fear. Nobody does. I don't like it either. But they do want to swim. They do want to play with their friends. They do want to go to the school. They do want to have the experiences. And they don't want to be stopped. And here's the thing. They're going to think that the thing is stopping them, the swimming or the school. But they're stopping themselves. So they can get twist that, right? They're imagining the worst already. Like, oh, my gosh, something bad's going to happen. The imagination's already working. Let's just direct it. Let's just show them how they have control of the imagination. It doesn't control them. Mm -hmm. And that that makes sense to parents when you say it that way, because they see it and they see it in themselves. They're like, every parent I've ever talked to is like, I wish I had this when I was a kid. I'm like, me too. You know, me too. And that's why I have to explain it to my parents. But, you know, they get it now. (laughs) I'm I'm wondering, how can we help the parents who – they have a kid that is really anxious to go swimming and climb that mountain and stand on top of the fence, but it's the parent who is like, no, I'm afraid that my kid is going to get hurt and I need to bubble wrap them so they don't experience <laughs> any pain in their life. Yeah, that's such that's such a great question um, because oftentimes the parents, by doing that, will instill the fear into them where the kid – wasn't thinking fear, right? They weren't, they weren't imagining fear. And now all of a sudden like, Oh wow, that, that could happen. And now that could be carried over into something else that they do. And the next thing, the next thing, and the parents are only trying to protect their kids, but we don't, don't realize. 
So there's, there's different ways to talk to them, right? And I think what it is, is really putting the choice in the kid's hands, even at a young age, just saying, I know you want to climb that fence. It looks like fun. It looks adventurous, right? So, you know, just make sure, and I wouldn't even be like, just be careful. I'd be like, you know, just make sure you're being attentive and focused, right? So you can do the best you can, you know? So instead of putting that, like, you could get hurt, just because what you're basically saying to them is be attentive, be focused, pay attention to what you're doing, right? You can let them know the best mountain climbers, the best fence scalers in the entire world have their entire focus on what they're doing to make sure that they achieve their goal. Are you ready? You make it a game. You make it fun. You don't give the fear. You power them up. You know, that's, that's really interesting. Words do have power. Not in the sense that, you know, they can knock us over physically, although they can put us in a place where we're not able to act physically. You just gave, a, I think, a great example of, you know, instead of saying to a kid, be careful, which implies danger, say to the kids, be attentive, yeah. be intentional, know what you're doing, be, yeah. you know, pay attention to what you're doing. That's a... That's putting something completely different. You, it's actually empowering kids, yeah. letting them know if, if they approach a challenge in a certain way with attention, with focus, with a plan, that they'll be able to achieve it as opposed to, be careful, that's dangerous. Yeah. Well, think about this, Jed. Focus is another inner superpower that we have. It's just what are we focusing on? So if the kid is climbing the fence and you go, be careful, they just turn their focus to be careful. You did the opposite to them. They, they may have been focused, like what they're doing. You go, be careful. And they're like, ah, and that's when they fall. And you don't realize that you did that. So showing them like, hey, you have the power to focus. So here we go. Focus on that. That's what all the best ones do. And if they have some, you know, athlete, you know, people that they look up to. You know, those basketball players, those football players, they have to focus on the ball. They have to focus on the basket. That's what you do. Focus. That's how you do your best. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, it, it does make sense. I have uh, was never an elite athlete, but I was a very competitive athlete in high school and college. And we practiced a lot of the. We didn't call it meditation. We didn't give it any kind of woo-woo terms, but we all visualized uh, at least those of us who were successful, we kind of visualized and yeah. got into that zone. And lots of athletes talk about getting into that zone. So it sounds like what you're doing is encouraging parents to help kids get into that zone. Yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, directing them so that they, they can do what they're set out to do. Mm -hmm. Because like we said, again, the, the parents aren't trying to take them away from it. They're trying to protect them. They just don't know how to make it a win-win, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we have to teach the parents as well. And, you know, I just did a reading on, on Zoom. It's just an open reading. And I wanted to talk to the parents only because I've done some readings to schools, virtual readings to schools. Um, in fact, I did one in Connecticut the other day. Um, and this particular one that I did the other day was for the parents because I wanted to show them what is Dax to the Max? What is Frederick the Bear? What is the cave? So when you read it to your kids, when you share it with your teachers, whatever, you're sharing it in a way that makes a positive, powerful impact. It's just not a kid going into a cave with a friend and a bear. Mm -hmm. It's more than that. Yeah. You're talking about helping kids understand that focus could be one of their inner superpowers. Um, a lot of parents of kids in that five to seven to 10 age range are struggling because their kids have a lack of focus. And while they may be having an uh, extreme case of focus, it's just that they're focused on whatever shiny thing comes into <laughs> their point of view and uh you know for a lot of folks the uh the first recommendation is that we treat this with medications yeah. are there ways to help our kids kind of reel in that and, and become more focused so that they're uh they're not being disruptive at school they're they're succeeding and there's no need for medications yeah i mean i'm not a doctor so i certainly don't want to say that you know 
Some kids perhaps do need medications. I'm just not sure if, if, if I don't know where the level of that mm-hmm. is. So I won't speak to that, but I do think that sh- teaching kids how to put, so what do we say to kids? We go focus. And the kid's like, I am. I'm just not, I'm focusing on like my daydream, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm focused. <laughs> and what we want to do is we want to teach them how to, how to focus. So what does that mean? It means that they can make something interesting by making it how, whatever it is that's happening inside them that like, if they're thinking of a game or playing or whatever, Let's make the thing that we want them to focus on, whether it be schoolwork or whatever, let's make that a game. Let's have them want to focus because you can't force focus. You can't force it, right? So we want them to want to focus by making it exciting. So I think on the teaching end, let's say if we're talking about school, we need to do that. We need to make things kid friendly. I mean, a lot of the stuff that's being taught is very antiquated. It's old and it's just, re, you know, on repeat. But the really great teachers are the ones that you know, add the spice to it. And I think less kids are not focusing on that when you add the spice to it. When I started Minds in Motion and I started doing these power parties, and power quests, I knew this. I've, I've worked with kids for almost 30 years in different arenas. And I created the power box. And the power box has the Play-Doh and the kinetic sand and the glider. And it has all of these props because when I teach them about the power of their imagination, we use Play-Doh. Why? They're not going to focus on me just talking about imagination, but they're going to have a better chance of focusing on the Play-Doh and learning about what you can do with your imagination. Right. And then they can get it because the point is for them to get it, not for me just to speak. Right. And so when you talk about their conscious and subconscious, okay, 10 year old kids, we're going to talk today about your conscious and your subconscious focus. Uh, (laughs) that's not that fun. No, no, no. We're going to talk about your pilot and your autopilot. And the pilot says, I want to go to Hawaii, which means I want to score that goal or I want to make that team or I want to get that grade or I want to be able to do this thing. Right. But then your autopilot. That's another thing. That autopilot's there to protect you, but you don't always need protection. No, 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 don't do it. It's too scary. What if we make a mistake? What if we fail? What if it's wrong? It's just chatter, 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 right? And so we get the glider out, you know, and we're like, you know, here's your pilot, here's your autopilot. You want to go to Hawaii. You want to do that thing. You get these two talking together and here's how you do it. You can reprogram it. You can tell it what you want it to say. So you get a list of things like you can do it. I can do it. I'm good enough. I'm not scared. You know, mistakes and failures are growth, whatever the affirmations are. And then they can see how it flies together. And that makes sense. And that's more fun. They'll focus on it. So coming back to your question, I think we just as adults and teachers and coaches need to make things a little bit more entertaining for them. And then if we really want to show them how to focus, I mean, draw a happy face on your you know, on your wall or on a piece of paper on your wall or something that they want to and and have them stare at it for 15 seconds and make it a game. Can you do it? Can you do it? I, I, the other day taught a class and I had them pick up a a clover and I said, you got to look at it for 15 seconds. Okay. And if your mind goes away, I want you to try to bring it back, but I definitely don't want you to do this. Oh, my mind's away. Oh, my mind's not supposed to be away. I want you to come back to your clover. Your clover. And then we talked about, were you able to do it? Some of them were like, I did it because I went clover, 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 clover. And in that particular class, we were talking about problems and solutions and where the focus goes. If you're focusing on the problem and giving the problem all the energy, or are you thinking about a solution, allowing your imagination to think, what could be the solution to this problem? That's where I want to put it. And so I tell them with that clover, I go, this is how your focus goes. You're either so ingrained on like problem 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 or you're widening the angle and you're going yeah there's a problem but solution solution maybe that's a solution maybe this is a solution and then finally what i tell them is i'm like look when you're cold if you sit around just go i'm so cold 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 you don't get warm that's the problem so when you're cold you go how can i warm up fire blanket turn on the heater go outside in the sun whatever it might be solution so Teach them that way about focus, where their focus can go. Mm, interesting. 
one of the things I noticed your um the name of your your company Minds in Motion uh it's spelled M I D Z E N Motion some people I think uh automatically associate the word zen with the religion eastern religions uh, is this Dax to the max? Is that you know a person that that is not practicing a religion or not practicing an Eastern religion? Is this something that they are going to be feel feel comfortable sharing with their kids? Yeah, absolutely. It has nothing to do with an Eastern religion at all. I know. I hear you with the word. I mean, Zen really means to calm, mm-hmm. to calm, and so it's calming your mind so you can get in real action. That's what mind's emotion is. Yeah. So. I, I get the term. It's kind of, it's the cute play on words. Sure. I get a lot of, what a cool name. Um, but yeah, I mean, it definitely could have that stigma. Dax to the max has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's a boy overcoming fear with imagination. Yeah. Yeah. I'm imagining there's, there are some people out there, some families um, that would have a lot of fun reading Dax to the max and then just talking to their kids about, some of the bears that they themselves are afraid of yes. and yes. then to model these kind of techniques with their kids. What do you think about yes. that? No, absolutely. I had a mom. It was actually one of Dax's classmates um, over at our house. They were having a play date. And she told me, she goes, I read this to my, to my daughter. And um, she decided to name her fears Harold. And then she said, she goes, you know, Harold used to, control me and tell me what to do but now i mostly tell harold what to do and harold sometimes protects me like tells me like don't cross the street without looking you know she had that as like you know protection the safety part of harold but when her hair when her fears got a name her mom said it changed everything and it was instantaneous because all it was to her before was fear and what's fear something to be afraid of. I mean, that's what you learn from when you're a kid, fear, mm-hmm. right? But when it's Harold or friendly, like it is in my book, not that scary. Mm-hmm. Y- you know, if you're listening to this and, and, and you're not convinced that these little exercises, and I think that that's what these are. We're, we're talking about exercises, you know, the yeah. things that we can put into practice. If you don't think they work, let me just share this. Uh, one of the things, as a, as a performer, someone's been doing magic for 30 years, oftentimes we'll have uh, young people, young performers come up to you and say, hey, you look so comfortable up on stage. I'm terrified when I get out there. How can I get to the point where I'm not feeling butterflies in my stomach, where my, my heart doesn't feel like it's going to explode out of my chest? And I say, you feel those things too? I do too. <laughs> That's excitement. I know that when I have bell- butterflies in my belly, when my heart's racing, that I'm excited about something. It's cool. actually the same physiological reactions we have when we're excited or when we're afraid. And, you know, for me, one of the things I teach these kids is like when those feelings are coming, just remind your brain that it's not fear. That's excitement. And what a yeah. difference it makes in their lives. Totally. I couldn't agree with you more. I love that. Yeah. Hey, I know people are going to want to know where they can go to find out more about Dax to the Max and find out more about Scott Feld. Yeah. Mindzenmotion.com is probably the best place. So it's M-I-N-D-Z-E-N-M-O-T-I-O-N.com. And Dax to the Max is there and all the other stuff that we do. And a bio about myself is there as well. And then, of course, you can buy the book from that website. Uh, right now, it links to Amazon, so you can just go straight to Amazon as well. Yeah. Yeah. And and are folks able to um, connect with you to get some more advanced training in 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 some of your your mind practices? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, power quest, power parties. Power speaking are all part of my program. And then I do do some personal coaching as well. Um, I can do virtual stuff, so I can do it international. I just finished a power quest um, with a bunch of Australian kids. So, I mean, thank you, Zoom. We can do this all over the place. Um, and so info at that same mindsinmotion.com is a great way to reach out to me um, and just tell me what you need. There's also some links on the website where you can fill out a form to contact me. Um, and I just love to talk to anybody and everybody. 
um, just about how I can best serve for sure. We've had a really fun and enlightening time talking to the author of Dax to the Max, Scott Feld. Scott, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Yeah, it was awesome. Thank you, Jeff. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Bob Hartman. Bob is an internationally celebrated storyteller and pastor. He'll be here to celebrate his Clever Cub series. Bob is also the um, creator of the U Version Bible app for kids. We talk about all of that and more on the next episode of the podcast. We are so happy that you join us for this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We would love to connect with you on social media, facebook.com slash reading with your kids, at reading with your kids on Instagram. We have a great Pinterest page, reading with your kids. We are on TikTok, reading with your kids. And of course, if you are a Twitter user, please connect with us at Shedley Magic. We'd also really love it if you could visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Uh, you can sign up for our free newsletter. We're revamping the newsletter, and we're really excited. I think, we, I think you're going to love it. We're going to be featuring author profiles, some great recipes that you can create with your kids, STEM activities, all sorts of really, really great stuff. You don't want to miss it, so go to readingwithyourkids.com right now. Sign up for that free newsletter. Oh, you can also use the contact button at the top of the page. Send us a message. Let us know what we're doing right. Let us know what we could be doing better. And most of all, let us know who you would like to hear on the podcast. And if you're the author, be sure to click on the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page to find out how you might become a guest here on the podcast. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, I want to start by thanking our guest, Scott Feld. Please be sure to check out Dax to the Max, Book One, Imagination. Reading with your kids, certified great read. Also want to thank our sponsor, Mission Control, a big feelings adventure by Nan Arkwright. Who's also a Reading with your kids, certified great read. My team, they deserve a big thank you. Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Skylar Strauss. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading with Your Kids podcast.